Hey guys, welcome back to Brandy Sherry TV. My name is Brandy, and today it is time for me to do an update video for you guys. I've been trying to film this video like time and time again, and I would look at it and I just don't like how it looks. I don't like what I was saying. So hopefully this time is like it's gonna be published and put up on YouTube. So um, if you do know or if you don't know. I am a recent RRT. Well, no, not an RRT yet, but I am a recent grad. I graduated with my Bachelor of Science on May 9th. So I last updated you guys on my ICU rotation. So I have to update you guys on my NICU and my externship rotation along with like where I've been, did I get a job, how I got the job, um, tips, tricks, you know, the usual. So um, before I get into the video, I do want to say thank you to everyone who has continued to support my business page, which will be linked below. It is For Your Love and Respiratory, um, my stationary site, um, and just me in general. I see the comments on YouTube. I see the subscribers that I get. Um, thank you to everyone who just continues to support me. And yeah. Let's just get into this video. So I did have my NICU rotation. I did my NICU rotation at a children's hospital um, in a neonatal unit, of course, because it was for the NICU. Um, I had eight days total, uh, splitting uh, four weeks. So it was two days a week for four weeks, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and I really liked NICU. When I did my NICU rotation, it really just solidified that I definitely want to work with children. I always knew in the back of my mind, because if you know me, you know I love babies, that I wanted to work with children, but I didn't know if I could handle like the trauma, like the mental trauma, um, you know, because you know, when you're taking care of these patients, of course you go through their chart, you know their diagnosis, how they got their diagnosis, why they're here. Um, you know a lot of personal information about those children. So learning um, how to deal with that wasn't as hard as I thought. Honestly, uh, I really, really, really enjoyed my NICU rotation, even though it was only eight days. I'm kind of sad that it was only eight days, but um, it is what it is. Uh, I know you have to be NPS certified uh, to work with children, so I do plan on getting my NPS after I finish taking my boards, but we'll get into that a little later. Um, so yeah, I did my NICU rotation. I loved it. I want to show you guys my uh, NICU book. So y'all know every semester, I do have a book. This book is my NICU book. Looks, oh my gosh, I hope you guys can see that. This is my NICU book. I hope you guys can see that it is beat up because girl, I had it for a minute. So in this book, because NICU patients are different and I'm not, I wasn't um, familiar with NICU patients, like their critical values. Of course I knew them, but I didn't know them like off the rip, like how I do know um, adult patients like critical values, like ABGs and things like that. So I did write it down. And this is one tip that I wanna give you guys. Um, number one, keep a notebook with you, like a small notebook or a large book like the ones that I sell um, but just keep some type of notebook or some type of paper on you that you're not gonna throw away at the end of the day I know um, at least at the hospitals that I've been at they give us like an assignment sheet and a sheet sorry and of course it has a bunch of patient information on it and you have to throw it away in the hospital bin before you leave so um, every information or every single bit of information that you've written down during the day, it has to be thrown away. So I definitely recommend getting a notebook so that you can keep up with everything that you have. Um, any questions, any um, diagnoses that you want to um, refresh up on, things like that. But what I use my notebook for primarily was for my critical values. So this is the back of the notebook. And I just wrote my, yeah, I want to make sure this is my Nikki one, my critical values. These are my nails, you guys. These are my graduation nails. No, they won't be staying on. Y'all know, can't have long nails like this, but anyway. So these are my critical values. Um, I just wrote down normal ABGs, acceptable ranges, because you know, children are just different. Things that we accept in children, we usually don't accept in um, adults is something that I've learned. Um, I also wrote down the electrolytes, and we also use the oscillator. So, in adults, I have never seen the oscillator, honestly. And in class, we kind of briefly went over it, but it was kind of like, you know, excuse me, you may see it, you may not. And if you do, just take it upon yourself to read up on it. So that's basically what I did. I had some of the therapists um, 
explain things to me. And I just wrote it down in my notebook because we did have a bunch of oscillator kids, um, a, a bunch of, sorry, neonates on the oscillator in my facility. So I had that down. I wrote that down in the back just so I can have it as a quick reference. I did also like write down my report in here just so, you know, I would just have it on me. I can utilize it for more than just this. Um, for report, uh, you wanna be as specific as possible. That's what I've learned with my NICU patients. Of course, with adult patients as well, but especially with NICU patients because um, they can change, you know, at the drop of a dime. So let me just give you guys like an example of how I would give report. Um, but other than like a very detailed report and keeping up with my critical values, um, that was pretty much it for my NICU rotation. I mean, turning them and just holding them. I did have a couple of favorite babies and there were the chunky monkeys on the floor. You know, I'm not, you know, calling people names, but I, that's what I call my babies. I call them chunky monkeys or little baby nuggets. And I would just hold them and I, would, I just love babies, you guys. And I'm just so happy that my school gave me the opportunity to have a NICU rotation. I'm not sure if every school has a NICU rotation. I feel like they do. But if they don't, you should definitely look into a NICU rotation. But working in a NICU rotation like the, the nurses or uh, the therapists, they knew from the jump that they wanted to be with children. So um, if you definitely, if you have an interest in it and your school doesn't offer it, I definitely recommend you trying to branch out and get some type of experience with NICU and see if it's something that you want to get into because it's really a great environment. I recommend Nick you to those who love it, of course. But, you know, if you're interested, like these babies need all the helping hands they, that they can get. So let me get into what I was supposed to be talking about, which is my report. So let me give y'all a quick story time. Very quick story time. I did um, get stumped one time on report because I think my head was just so in the clouds. I think it was like maybe my second day or whatever. And I could tell the patient or I could tell the therapist coming behind me what medicines they were getting. I could tell them, you know, cute, whatever. But I really couldn't tell them anymore because I was just so happy to be with the baby. So I got stumped, but that will never happen again. Let me just give you guys like a quick thing on how I gave my report after that situation because your girl... We're not getting, we, we don't, we don't let that happen no more. Y'all not going to catch me slipping no more. So let me give you guys just an example. And of course, these names are not real names. I'm not going to use a real name. No HIPAA violations over here. So I will always give the patient's last name, the room number, the diagnoses, how old, the sex um, of the patient and the meds, right? So this is how it will go. So we have a eight week old female in room 32, last name Wynn, with a diagnosis of bowel obstruction. They get a MDI BID, a CVG Q12, and albuterol Q8, boom. Now if this patient is on the vent, I will go in to say they have a size three, of course that's the Neobar, size three Neobar, eight at the lip, Bit settings are blah 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 um, and this is the most recent ABG now because this patient had a Q12 CBG of course you're gonna tell them the most recent one but I recommend telling the most recent ABG regardless because it's important to know the ventilation and oxygenation status of your patient um, and I will also just throw in like a couple of things that I've heard, like say if the nurse saying that they're going to go to MRI around nine o'clock and I was day shift, I would tell them, Hey, I heard, you know, maybe they may be going to MRI around nine o'clock. I'm not sure, but just be on the lookout, maybe get the vent together. The oxygen tanks are full. Like, you know, just give them a nice overall view of what happened when you had the patient and what they may be walking into after the, um, after you leave. So that was my Nikki rotation. Eight days, like I said, short and sweet. Loved it. Love kids. Hopefully, um, I'm going to work with kids. But yeah, so moving on into my externship, we had um, a lot of transplant patients. Now, for my ICU clinical rotation, I love my ICU rotation because that was a level one trauma hospital. We seen gunshot wounds, we seen peas versus auto. I mean, we seen everything. It was very bloody, very gory, very like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Very, um, very 
very dense days, if you know what I mean. Like a lot of a lot of patients to see, a lot of vents to monitor. Not too many, in my opinion. Not too many where it affects patient care, but definitely a lot more um, than the hospital that I was at for externships. So, of course, going from NICU, which is kind of slow paced, in my opinion. Of course, compared to externs. I mean, I see you, but it was kind of slow paced. It's kind of like you know what's going on with these babies. You know. You know when to monitor them of course you do have i don't know events where things go wrong or things go left or you know you need to start certain treatments or of course you know you have emergency things that happen people come in from transport da, 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 da. my externship was i don't know it wasn't that busy to me and i realized when i went to my externship one that i love to work with children so i knew i wanted to be in a facility that offered neonates um, and that facility did not. And two, I wanted to be with trauma. I needed to be ripping and running. I love the ripping and running. I love the quick on your feet, like what should we do type of thing. Um, of course, right now, I'm probably not prepared for it, but I loved being in that type of environment where you know we're constantly bouncing off of each other, things like that. So um, in my externship, it wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't my speed in you know regards to those two things i wanted neonates um and i wanted more trauma um and in this hospital particularly i'm not like shade in the hospital or whatever it was a lot more transplant it was a lot more oncology um just things like that i learned of course how i want to do a routine of things like how i want to handle my own patient load um you know how i'm going to prioritize my patients things like that but I also it also gave me time to really think if I wanted to be in a hospital setting like this where it's a little bit more quiet of course we had ECMO at that hospital because so it wasn't it's not quiet but it definitely is still like critical care but it's not like gunshot wounds and uh peas versus auto at a level one trauma hospital who um, is in a community where that happens a lot more often than it would probably ever happen in this other community where I did my externship. If y'all catching my drift, I don't know if y'all are, I can't say no names, so yeah. Um, so that's more so what I learned in my externship, my routine of how to do things, and just where I wanted to plant my feet when I got done with my degree. Um, I really appreciate everything that all of my preceptors have done for me and all the information that they've given me. Um, I will say for my externship in particular, I felt like I didn't have that many questions and I'm not sure if it's because it was my externship and I was just a little bit more familiar with things or if it was just, I don't know if I was learning, you know what I mean? It was things that of course I was familiar with and of course I don't know everything. I'd never go in any type of facility with that type of attitude but I just kind of felt like I was doing the same thing over and over and over again and I wasn't really learning much you know what I mean um versus like my ICU which as y'all can tell my ICU rotation was my favorite rotation um especially the hospital that I was placed at um I felt like I had questions back to back to back to back why why this why are we doing this what type of disease is this? What type of, wow, I've never heard of this disease. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna study this disease. Like things like that, that I didn't really experience in other hospitals. Um, NICU, I had a bunch of questions in NICU, of course, cause that was my first NICU rotation. First time being with children, um, you do things completely different. I mean, completely different um, than an adult facility. But in my externship, I kind of felt like, um, I just kind of felt like that wasn't the place for me, if you know what I mean. Um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, I don't really want to really keep talking about it, but definitely in your externship, if that's a place where you want to work, really make sure that that's a place where you want to work. Um, in my days, I like, I asked like the person who was over where I would be placed, like the floors or the units that I would be placed in, I would ask her like, you know, hey, can I go to ER? Can I go to this ICU? Can I go to that ICU? Can I, you know, can I do this? Cause I wanted to see like what's going on and I just, I don't know, I just didn't feel it. So um, needless to say, I'm, of course, I'm not gonna be working at the hospital after I get my um, after I get my um, RRT, but I will be working at a hospital that 
offers both neonatal care and adult facilities because I always wanted to do both. I was thinking maybe I'll do a PRN at one and a full time at another, um, you know, an adult facility and a neonatal facility. But I was blessed and offered the opportunity to work at a facility that offers both. So I don't have to do like the PRN and the full time, which I probably still will do because girl got um, <laughs> loans that I need to pay. Not a lot, but I need to pay those loans. But um, yeah, I was just blessed and given the opportunity and I took that opportunity. So yes, your girl did get a job. <laughs> I had several interviews uh, prior to me graduating um, and I got an offer from all of my interviews. I got an offer from every single last one of my interviews. And um, I'm gonna give you guys just a couple of quick tips um, just on how to do well in an interview. Of course, you always wanna be honest. Um, go in and be yourself and be confident because as much as you need them for a job, they also need employees. They wouldn't be um, interviewing if they weren't in need of an employee. So be honest, be confident, um, and make sure you practice. I mean, stand in the mirror. What I would do is I would just stand in the mirror. I looked up questions that were um, commonly asked, like character questions and things like that. I made sure I was up to date on everything um, because I did want to work in the Nikki pod, I read up on certain disease processes, um, and I knew I wanted to, and when I was in a, the, the, ugh, gosh, you guys, <laughs> I knew when I was going to be in the adult facility that I wanted to be in the ICU. Of course, floors in ICU, they both hold the same amount of importance. You don't want people on the floors going to the ICU, and you want that people in the ICU to go to the floors and go home. But I wanted to be in the ICU, so... I made sure that I know about all of those critical diseases. Of course, from my ICU clinical rotation, um, I knew all of those off rip kind of because they would beat it into our head. Certain disease processes, they would beat into our head and they would say, hey, you need to know this, which I really appreciate. And they would say, these are the resources to obtaining that information. And this is, this is the protocol that we use at this hospital and this is what you need to know. And this will help you, you know, in the future, da da da. da. So, um, yeah, just do all of that confidence, be truthful, don't give these people no crazy story. If they're asking you about, you know, when was one time you had like a non-compliant patient or something like that, don't go in and make it seem like you were being superwoman and, oh my God, this patient was fighting me and I came in with the S on my chest. They don't, they don't want to hear all of that. They, they want to know more so about what you learned from it and how you're going to apply it into your everyday life when you're coming into work. Stuff like that. that. Don't give them no crazy story, especially if it's a lie, because it's easier to remember the truth than to remember a lie. And y'all know it. So, yeah, that's my advice for that. It's pretty easy. Not easy, but it's pretty simple. As long as you know your stuff, they know that you're going to be a new grad. And of course, I'm speaking to my new grads because I am a new grad. They know that you're a student. They know that you have very limited experience, but they want to know that these kids out here doing Hold on, y'all. Let me be nosy. So, like I was saying, they just want to know that you're willing to learn and that you know something. There are some people, I guess, they just float and get by in the program. They kind of lay low. Um, and, you know, those people do graduate. But they want to make sure that you're not one of those people. And they want to make sure that you're willing to learn. You're a go-getter. Things like that. And with those combined, you'll just be a great RT. You'll be a value to That's pretty much it for my externship and my um, advice. Um, also, in externship, I had a notebook. But I wrote down the same thing. Not as much as I wrote down in my NICU book because, of course... I kind of know these values off the top of my head. I mean, we know what a normal ABG is. We know what normal electrolytes are. Um, that's just kind of the kind of training that I got from my school. I also like to be quiz. I tell people all the time as a preceptor, or as a preceptee, I tell my preceptor, please quiz me. I need to be on my P's and Q's. Don't just, don't just walk around and just do like your normal things with me because I'm picking up how you do it, but I'm not picking up why you do it. You know what I mean? Of course, simple things like I, I will know why you do it, but I like for people to question me and just keep me on my P's and Q's because that's really how I learn. Um, for example, I had one of my preceptors in my externship. You know, she was a great preceptor. When I told her to quiz me, she really quizzed me and I was loving it. 
So she would ask me certain things like, why can we not wean this patient? And you know, I would look and I'm like, well, you know, he's on this medication, he's on that. Also with the protocol that we have, in a place they're not even eligible for weaning the peep is too high and the oxygen is too high da, 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 da. things like that just things that are like simple but things that keep me on my p's and q's as a student because that's how i would like to think and that's how i want to kind of talk to myself when i become a therapist so yeah that i think that's it for my video is that it you guys am i missing anything am i missing anything Probably not. Um, yeah, I wanted to make this video just super cute, sweet, and condensed. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything. I'm praying I'm not missing anything. I told you guys about my NICU. I told you guys about my externship. I told you guys that I got a job. I told you guys how I secured that job. Um, tips and tricks. Tips and tricks for NICU. Tips and tricks for externship. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any more additional questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.